The Change Officer Podcast's Future of Financial Services series is brought to you by Holly Wally, the world's first wallet as a service platform. Stay tuned to find out how Holly Wally can help you build your mobile wallet to increase revenue and reduce time to market. If I had to point one next frontier, I believe in, in payments, um, I think it's really addressing uh, sort of the uh, unbanked population and even the underbanked population uh, as well. Uh, but when we look around, there's almost like 1.6 billion people on this planet that don't have a bank account. And that's not even counting the people that do have a bank account, but either don't use it. It's very hard for them to get out of poverty without access to financial services, particularly in need of capital to be able to do that. Countries that help drive financial inclusion can improve their GDP by up to 30%. So there's tremendous opportunity, not just to help individuals succeed, but also help nations rise and succeed as well. Welcome to the Change Officer Podcast's Future of Financial Services series. In this series, we are deep diving into some of the hottest and most pivotal topics in the financial services industry right now, including personalization in financial services, embedded finance, and the mobile payment revolution. Join us as we seek the answers to critical questions such as what does the future hold for the financial services sector and where should we look for the next big disruptive idea. Welcome to the show, Omar. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here. I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm more excited than you, to be <laughs> honest. Um, this is our, I think uh, we're at around the 11th episode of the Future of Financial Services um, series. And we had a chance to talk with, you know, a, a wide variety of stakeholders from the industry. We talked with a couple of banks. We talked with um, some fintechs. We talked with some insurances. Uh, and there was one overarching topic that was always mentioned, technology. So mm -hmm. having you in the show and being able to tackle this topic straight on with someone who's heading technology, well, for a part of the business of one of the biggest businesses in the world, um, it's uh, very exciting for me. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks again for having me here. Uh, very excited. I've been also following the, the show. Uh, I watched uh, not too long ago the episode with Talal uh, that uh, he was here. So. Uh, great episode. Um, again, great to tackle the topics and talk about technology. Um, I think especially when it comes to the financial industry, uh, obviously technology is at the core of both the innovation and the transformation that's happening in financial technology services. So looking forward to the discussion. No, absolutely. And by the way, Talal episode spot on. Yeah. He really managed to unpack the <laughs> basics of blockchain. So whoever didn't listen, shoot off for another track, future of technology and, and, and have a go. So going to the topic yeah. uh, straight on this this series is very focused we have 15 20 minutes to cover it so obviously we have an increasing um demand for digital banking but not only digital banking all of the financial services um uh, uh services from millennials gen gen zers and it's completely transforming the complete industry so uh, the growing the whole the overarching the growing desire to access um not only banking services but all financial services from digital channels has led to a surge of payment solutions, fintechs, trying to disrupt the, market, the, the, the industry, partnerships, everything that is going on. Um, so we already saw uh, cloud and mobile turn businesses upside down yeah. several years ago or decades. Um, now what is happening currently is tending to disrupt this industry on a completely different travel level. And I'm not sure if the disrupting of the industry is really the right term sure. because a lot of mergers will happen and collaboration and ecosystem building. Um, but we feel it's still early days. Yeah, There is still a lot of things to be done. What's your take on this whole topic? Um, and, uh, you know, what are your two cents? Sure. So I think for me, um, I think I, I read an article earlier this year in Forbes that uh, the headline of which really stuck in my mind because I think it, it kind of directly hits on the topic. And, and the title said, basically, uh, the sort of uh, collaboration is the new fintech model. And so it really brought in the notion of developing the ecosystem of financial services across a large, broad stakeholder group. Um, collaborating together to innovate on behalf of you know merchants and consumers 
in the financial services space. Um, I wanted to perhaps give one specific example, at least from our from our recent history at Amazon Payment Services. Um, in 21 and through early 22, uh, we actually worked with uh, the Central Bank of Egypt, uh, CBE, together with a broad range of stakeholders to help them launch uh, essentially the instant payment network uh, in Egypt. So this is basically the infrastructure that will allow uh, consumers to basically instantly access and manage uh, financial services, for example, transfer payments between, uh, between two different entities, uh, whether to businesses or to other peers, uh, etc. And we believe that's a fundamental piece to enable financial access and also inclusion. As you know, Egypt is around 67% unbanked population. You have high mobile penetration, probably in the mid 90s, uh, maybe 93% or, or somewhere around there. So there's tremendous opportunities to help transform financial services in the country. And that's only you know, been made possible by collaboration across a broad range of uh, stakeholders, uh, you know, government, central banks, uh, uh, traditional financial institutions, but also fintech players uh, in the space as well. Um, so we do see tremendous opportunity there. We also see opportunities in terms of sharing uh, thought leadership and, and perspective across uh, stakeholder groups. So, you know, through our presence in the FinTech Lab uh, and DIFC, we've also been uh, pulling together groups and discussing relevant topics to help advance the state of the industry, whether it's on topics like buy now, pay later, uh, or topics like the use of artificial intelligence and, and financial technologies. Um, so we believe that, uh, you know, we'll continue to play a, an important role in bringing together uh, the ecosystem uh, and believe that collaboration uh, with an aim to innovate on behalf of consumers and merchants uh, is the way of the future. Yeah. Right. I hear you. So and I, I agree. Collaboration does need to happen. There is a lot of stakeholders involved. Yeah. Um, trying to have all of the stakeholders talk together is going to, it takes time yeah. to, to get the conversation going and to yeah. actually have some tangible uh, outputs out of that. And that's something that needs to happen, I believe, in parallel. Yeah. Um, going level deeper, yeah. what do you think are some of the immediate or most impactful partnerships that need to happen in the whole ecosystem with some specific players sure. that will give us the immediate results and some use cases? Sure. So I think maybe the the sort of the more immediate opportunities, and we're already starting to see it unpack in, in several geographies in the region, uh, I would say is open banking, uh, because I think with access to information is really where innovation can really start to happen uh, across many different players in the, in the ecosystem. Um, so we see open banking, obviously, at various states of adoption and rollout uh, in various countries, but also in terms of uh, the different functionalities that are being made available is progressing over time. So at least to me, that's one very exciting development that's happening in the region. And in some ways, uh, I would believe the region is leading that movement even globally uh, with respect to uh, what's being made available and the innovation that that's helping drive uh, as we move forward. And I think while you know direct consumer facing applications are taking a little bit of time to be built on top of that, I think it's only a matter of time before those uh, start to become mainstream. Yeah, I, I, I would have to agree, and I w I'm going to point everyone now to listen to the episode with uh, Mirna from FinTech Galaxy yeah. because we unpack the op open banking really nicely, and there are some massive opportunities over there that we should explore. Hey everyone, sorry for jumping in. We'll be back with the rest of the conversation shortly, but I wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of our show, Holly Wally. Within the next two years, 4 billion people will be using digital wallets and the global mobile payments market size is expected to hit US $5.5 billion by 2024. It's more important than ever for financial service providers to offer a digital wallet service to their customers. Enter HollyWally, the world's first wallet as a service platform that allows any financial service provider to build their own digital wallet as efficiently and cost effectively as possible. Whether you're a fintech, retailer, banking institution or insurance carrier, Holly Wally has all the elements you need to build your own company's ideal digital wallet in a matter of minutes and manage it on an ongoing basis. To find out how Holly Wally can increase your customer engagement and revenue or to register for a demo, visit hollywally.com. The link can be found in the show notes of this episode. And now enjoy the rest of this conversation. 
if you had to point out one more that is leading or being the close second to blockchain when it comes to impact it will have on financial services in specific yeah. what would that be uh, i would say uh, you know continued advancements and uh, i would say artificial intelligence and machine learning i think is probably the other that i would point out in terms of you know broad applications that we're seeing uh, in various areas of the financial uh, uh, financial industry i would point out Maybe it's uses in terms of uh, when we talk about risk management, you know, fraud management, I think is a prime area where we're seeing continued adoption and uh, build up of AI ML capabilities to help us understand that as, you know, uh, customers are, are transacting, uh, whether, you know, they are who they claim to be, they are, and that the transaction they're committing is essentially, uh, you know, validated and uh trustworthy from that uh, from that standpoint um, obviously this is an area that's uh, becoming uh, more and more challenging because as technology is being made available it's being used by the other side to commit you know a fraud uh, and so we see it like there's massive opportunity there um, i think that one report i read recently said that uh, around 48 billion dollars uh, of fraud from online and digital payments is expected to occur in the year 2023. Uh, it's a massive number, and that's probably underestimated uh, by some accords as well. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there, and obviously technology has to play a key role uh, in that. Um, you know, one way to say we can, you know, combat, uh, let's say, uh, you know, fraud uh, is it cannot be at the expense of the customer experience, right? Ultimately, you can go and ask the user to provide 20 evidences and answer 30 questions and whatever else to make a transaction that nobody would want to do anything online anymore. Um, so you have to be able to continue to raise the bar on risk management while at the same time, you know, preserving and enhancing the CX. Um, again, it gets tougher as the mediums of interaction with, with people, with financial services uh, varies. So traditionally, people only used to transact on a on a computer, obviously then on mobile, but now even on surfaces that don't even have like a, an actual user interface, like for example, with their home assistant uh, using voice or with their TV at home uh, or with any smart device that, that they have. Um, so definitely technology, particularly AI ML in terms of understanding behavior, gathering the data points and being able to detect trends of deferring from the regular behavior is going to play a big role there as well. Yeah. I think that's an interesting topic and uh, it's, it's always difficult to be on the defense side sure. because there are so many things that you need to protect. You know, when Absolutely. you're an attacker, you can choose your battles and then look for the weak spot. Yeah. But uh, Because technology a, is <laughs> in some ways being used by both sides. So yeah. technology is helping you, but at the same time, it's being used on the other side as well. Yeah, yeah. Or just making it fun as well. Not as fun <laughs> when you lose $48 billion, sure. but <laughs> it can be fun. Sure. Um, uh, when it comes to payments in specific, we've been through a, a, a couple of iterations and generations of, of, of payments. Now we are, let's say, living in the in the age of mobile payments, yeah. you know, digital wallets, etc. Yeah. Um, where do you see payments evolving uh, in the future? Sure. Especially having now the metaverse, uh, you know, and then the AI, etc. Yeah. What is this next stage of payments? Sure. So for me, if I had to point kind of uh, like one next frontier, I believe in, in payments, um, I think it's really addressing uh, sort of the uh, unbanked population and even the underbanked population uh, as well. Uh, it's easy sometimes for us, you know, sitting here out of the out of the UAE uh, to think that, hey, everyone has at least access to a bank account, uh, to some basic financial services. Uh, but when we look around, there's almost like 1.6 billion people on this planet that don't have a bank account. Um, and that's not even counting the people that do have a bank account, but either don't use it uh, or just use it as a means to you know, get their payroll and then immediately withdraw it. And they're not really leveraging any financial services. Um, and so why you know, we believe this is important, obviously, uh, people who are either unbanked or underbanked, um, if they are, you know, if they are poor, uh, it's very hard for them to get out of poverty without access to financial services, particularly in need of capital to be able to do that. Um, and so and not only at the individual level, but when we look at countries, I think, um, you know, ENY recently said in a report that uh, 
you know, countries that help drive financial inclusion can improve their GDP by up to 30 uh, percent. So there's tremendous opportunity not just to help individuals uh, succeed, but also help nations, uh, you know, rise and succeed as well. So I think there's a tremendous opportunity here, especially for technology to play a role in, in bringing uh, both, you know, financial inclusion and financial access to help, you know, bring these folks into the modern digital uh, digital economy. Um, there is some bright spots that are happening to make that happen. Uh, you know, one of them is related to uh, mobile technology and mobile penetration. Obviously, we see that, uh, for example, today, over 70% of mobile fin financial transactions in terms of money transfers and whatnot occur in Africa. So that's that shows there's there's you know big opportunity there, and also we see you know global scale projects in terms of how do you bring internet access to most of the rest of the world where it doesn't exist today. So I think that with those pieces of infrastructure in place, there's an opportunity to help drive that uh, opportunity forward. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that we open unbanked uh, as a topic. We are getting the answer very often. It's a massive opportunity. I found the number 1.7 billion are unbanked and 66% of them own a mobile phone. Yeah. Which is sort of pointing you in a certain direction. Now there is a there is a different sort of side of that. There is a reason why unbanked are unbanked. Yeah. And in many cases unbanked have a different problem. Yeah. Not access to capital. Yeah. They they need access to making money yeah. because they are at the edge of poverty or they are they're they're super um, uh, the poverty is at extreme level um so providing them access to capital or access to loans etc can make their situation just worst sure um so there are two ways there are two directions one is how can we enable poor to make money yeah possibly with technology sure. and then there are there is certain number of use cases when it comes to banking that can be sold like money transfer, P2P payments, etc. Yeah. Now having all of this in mind, and there is a massive opportunity, but there is a reason why there is a big gap. Yeah. Now this is a question for Omar. This yeah. is not for sure. Amazon payment services, Amazon, any other. This is a question for Omar, sure. and this is a wrap-up question sure. for signature the change sure. officer question. Um, as the change maker, yeah. As the change officer, if you had to focus on one problem or one opportunity, build your own company solve the problem um now i need to narrow down the question so i get the, the, sure. the good answer we're not looking at big audacious you know goals where still the answers are maybe not that clear etc we're looking at something short term three to five years actually executable where do you see that opportunity and what would you focus on sure so at least from my perspective kind of uh going back to to what we just stated i, I think to me the uh, the point on access to to capital and and how we bring of course you know capital has to be directed in the right responsible way because as you said it, it can be a double-edged sword uh, but to me it's it's been proven and again and again how access to capital particularly in emerging markets is so important to develop both the individual's capabilities and that of the country as a whole as a whole. And we've seen emerging platforms in different countries emerge to help plug that gap, and they've been quite successful. Um, and so to me, I would that's an opportunity that perhaps I would double down on in terms of how do you bring uh, access to, to capital uh, at obviously reasonable rates to help uh, these emerging economies and the individuals within them uh, to succeed, I think would be the one that I would focus on. Yeah. Omar. Thanks for taking the time to join awesome. me. Awesome. No worries at all. Happy to be here. And thanks a lot. Had, had a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks. Perfect. Guys, thank you for staying until the end. I hope you enjoyed the session of Future of Financial Services. Stay tuned. There is another awesome one coming out next Monday. Take care.